finally live, maybe? All right. You know what grinds my gears? Me. I grind my gears. Let's see if anyone gets on to watch before we start talking. It only took me 25 minutes to sign on tonight because it's 11.43, and I should be at least talking about socks and sandals by now. But, ah, uh, Garrett, let's see what I got for you on this table. How about this? Because, you know, we're in the record book, so you'll get there someday, but not yet, my friend. Mr. Mahomey, oh, quick as the 80 touchdowns. He'll pass everybody, but. Well, I, I got the past to live on, but once again, rocking my homage shirt today, hot diggity dog. If you have, uh, if you've got kids, you know, hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. I always try to rock the homage shirts in hopes that one day they'll make me a gold line shirt that I can wear for my shows. Maybe I can even do a collaboration. People like the koozies, I pay for those. I don't know. Maybe someone will make the hobby shirt and we could sell it at the national or something. But you no, know, we got one person watching. You know, Garrett, I signed into my other, my uh, my personal YouTube before I signed on here, and that's what took me so long to get on. But since there's one person, we'll uh, go through little mail day see if anyone else signs on because it's 11:44. The World Series just ended. And I, I, I grind my own gears today because I screwed everything up. But got a cool little mail day today. Got a Max Scherzer 2018 top sepia PSA 9. This was a throwing card. Thought it was pretty cool. A Shelby Miller GMA 10 rookie card. What I actually bought was Mr. Albies. PSA 9 and Mr. Albies PSA 9. These are like eight bucks each. You know what? For eight bucks, I'd rather have this than I than eight dollars. Because you know what? Right now, eight dollars is like a number four combo meal from Wendy's, like regular sized. And I had enough of those. So I'd rather have this card than a number four for Wendy's. I'm not even sure what a number four from Wendy's are. But today, um, Yesterday, was it yesterday? One of these days. Yesterday, I ran into my first ever pack searcher. Now, this individual was rather large, muscular build, had a ponytail, uh, a beard hmm, about down to here. The T Rex, oh, T Rex burger live stream. I don't even know what that is, but if we can somehow do it on a Zoom call, count me in. But uh, pack searchers, this dude was pack searching football sticker packs. Like at Walmart at about 4.30 in the afternoon. What kind of situation are you in that you are pack searching Walmart football sticker packs? Like are you really hoping to get, you know, you want to see, uh, like, I, I can't even tell you what's in there. So you really 22 patties, nine slices, all the toppings. Oh, I'm having a heart attack. Just reading that buddy. Like, what, what are you trying to get by searching sticker packs? Like who's worth what? I know Garrett, you and Parker sent Claire that book and she likes putting stickers in the book. And actually we're sending some to, uh, cause we have so many, um, to Ryan Finch's kids. And uh, because they they like stickers, one of them likes Charlie Blackman, the other one likes stickers, so we're sending them out a package. But yeah, dude, so the, the pack searcher guy, I mean, when I posted this uh tweet up today to see who was who was going to be watching and, and if anybody had comments, like four people sent um videos of stuff of packs that just looked like this. Now I can show you this because it's my pack. I paid for it and I've bought it, but they'll get somewhere and the pack will be just looking like this on the shelf, but then it'll look like this. Somebody opened it. Oh my goodness. So don't be that guy because, or that girl or that human being. Cause then you know what? You're putting it back. You're taking out the, the cards that you want and putting them back. Just take the whole thing. Like well, you're on camera already doing it. 
So why not just take the whole thing? If you're going to take one card out of it, what you think you're special because you can take a, a Jamal Adams silver. I mean, how long does it take you to look through them? You don't think people are watching you? Because you know what, Mr. Ponytail Man, less people are watching me than the very large man with the ponytail wearing socks and sandals, sweatpants, and a huge hoodie standing in the aisle with nothing there but stickers. Every single person who walked by was like, yo, look at that dude. I bet he lifts. You know what? I bet he works out. He's probably coming from the gym across the street. They're not going to look at me because I'm like, yo, what's this frozen box? Let me get some stickers for my kid. Or what's this magic gathering? Can I find some penny sleeves? No, they're not looking at me. They're looking at the very large man with the ponytail. So ran into my very first pack searcher and it was stickers. It wasn't even anything good. So that was a bunch of malarkey. And then, you know, you get these, these tweets that says, should I buy these? Should I buy this? I'm at Target. I'm at Walmart. Take a picture. Should I buy this? Like, if you got to ask yourself, the answer is no. Because what you're really asking is, can I flip this? Can I make some money by buying this box and selling it? So screw you. No, you don't want that product. Leave it on the shelf for somebody who wants the product. Uh, my buddy Justin the other day. He's like, hey, man, uh, what's in these complete sets? And he's just asking because he doesn't really know. And I'm like, well, where are you at? Are they Walmarts? Are they green? Are they blues? Like, I'm at, I'm at Target. I got these blue ones. I don't really know what's going on here. I'm like, bro, if you don't know, leave it because somebody's going to want that product. Like, for me, I don't know the damn first thing about soccer. I don't even like soccer. I really don't even like people who do like soccer. Chris, what up, man? Missed my, my little rant about pack searchers. I found a dude pack searching for football stickers. But now we're on to, should I buy these tweets? Because no, you shouldn't. If you don't want that box, leave it for the person who does. So if you're going to buy you know, a top series two just because you want to buy it, that means I can't go to the store and buy a top series two because I want to open it. If you're going to go and buy the Topps um, complete set, what's up, Yak? Dave, I'm having a good night, man. Actually, I was having a great day, and I got home from work. Um, my wonderful wife was looking through my hobby desk because I sold a bunch of cards over the weekend, and there's, believe it or not, one I can't find. How often does that happen? Like every single time I, I try to sell stuff. So I've got one package to send out tomorrow, and she was trying to help me, so I had to set up my uh, my computer then I sign into the wrong YouTube and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But if you're tweeting out, should I buy this? The answer is no. So back to the example, he's like, hey, should I buy this complete set? So you're taking it away from somebody who wants to buy it. Like um, my buddy Nick was like, hey, dude, yeah, I buy uh, complete sets for my kids every year they're born. Like that is genius. I was like, <laughs> Mind blown. I need to buy some complete sets for my kids. So I got the green one from Walmart, which uh, you guys probably saw. I got the stars parallel. I bought one complete set for myself to open at some time and then one for each of my kids, you know, because I want to start trying to find a 19 for Cooper and then 16, 17, 18, 19 for Claire. And then just have one literally buy them one every year that, that they're alive and kind of have just something collect to be cool. So if you're at the store buying that just to buy it, you're taking it away from me who wants to buy it. Or here, take this for example. I showed this. My parents bought me this for my birthday. My birthday was, uh, what, like a week and a half ago now. They don't know the first thing about cards. But you know what? This meant a lot to me because my mom and dad know I like cards and bought this for me. So this was awesome. But if you don't like Prestige or 2019, leave it on the shelf for somebody who does. Because you're not going to flip that box. And if you do, you're going to make, well, like $2. Like I see these people buying, like this guy had $700 worth of Don Russ in his cart. Should I buy this? Like, no, dude, put it back on the shelf. Well, who is flipping Don Russ football? I know, Garrett, you said you got some just recently for Parker at cost. Bro, if I ever find Don Russ football, I will gladly just send it to you. Or, but I can't find retail anywhere. But like, we're at the point of the hobby. I know you talk, talked about bringing up prices where we're really flipping Don Russ football. Like, can I find a Don Russ card sitting here? I don't know. I got stacks just everywhere. But you know, these cards are 
you're going to find a rated rookie of Jerry Judy and sell it to me for 20 bucks? No. That's like a $3 card, man. His mosaics are going for like $1.50, but it's the hot thing right now because nothing else is out there. We got news that two is coming to play this week. So his cards, you know what they did today? They doubled. But back to that, it shouldn't be, should I buy these? Tweet it out and be honest with what you're saying. Can I flip this? Can I make some money off this? Because if you're not going to open that box, leave it there for somebody who it is. Because you know what? There's plenty of cards on the Tops website. Heritage is there. Archives is there. And there's, I can't even, the t- complete sets are there. There's three or four products that are always on the Tops website. Go buy them. You know, and they say, like, that get, That just leaves, like, you know, leave some for the kids. Leave some for the kids. Like, if you don't want to open it, if you don't think you can resell it, like, I don't care if you go wipe out a whole entire shelf. So I'm kind of going in circles here because, you know, what? if you have to feed your family or whatever, buy a whole entire shelf if you can sell it. But if you're buying out stuff that you have no idea what it is and you have to ask people on Twitter, don't, don't buy the product because you didn't do your research. You don't know what it is. The people going out clearing shelves of Mosaic, they know what Mosaic is. They know what they can sell Mosaic for. They know what kind of price they're getting for it. People who are clearing out the Bowman Chrome, they know what they're going to sell those for. They know how much money they're getting. The people who are spending $700 on Don Russ, scratching off a lottery ticket. Can I make $700 back? I mean, what's it going to cost you with just opportunity cost and shipping and time and just no, man, just no. There's product. And if you're going to wipe out a shelf, great, awesome, whatever you want to do. Just make sure you know what it is. Like you will never see me buying a soccer pack. Like back, you know, a couple months ago, everyone's into these soccer cellos and um, whatever kinds they were. I don't remember. Probably Chronicles or something. Like, yeah, they're sitting on my target. Okay, I'm not buying them. I don't know a single soccer player who plays in the United States. Last soccer player I knew was Freddie Adu. And he was like 12. Uh, Dempsey. Someone last name Dempsey. Clint Dempsey. I think he's uh, the goalie or something. And Hope Solo. You know, people know the women because they're good. Using your business class terms, opportunity cost. Come on, man. You know what that means. That means, I don't know what it means. I'm just saying it. So, um, yeah, just like your time, money, of value. Time, value, of money. What is your time worth? What is your money worth? What is literally cards worth? Like, yeah, is cards an investment, Garrett? No. You know what's an investment? Apple. An index fund. My 401k. You can be like, yeah, well, Mike Trout, the rookie card, you bought it in 2012, and now it's worth a million dollars. Okay, great. Well, if you bought Apple in 1988, you're a billionaire right now. So, But that's not how cards work. I mean, just the sheer – I mean, what would the beta of a card be? Um, Like 12 compared to (laughs) one of Apple? The um, – inconsistencies of the prices and the ebbs and flows that go up and down is just ridiculous. Like people, Oh, I want to buy, you know what? I bought a Cody Bellinger. Uh, awesome game tonight, by the way, Cody, uh, a co- two, a couple of Cunhas and Soto PSA tens. And guess what? You know what? They're down 30% right now. It's a card. It was like $200. You know where my Microsoft is, you know, where my Apple is, you know, where my AMD is my Nvidia is they're, they're sky high right now. You know where, I mean, it's probably going to go down with the election coming up and we're in an economic crisis and everything. So get your stuff in an index fund, get your money. If you're investing in retirement, I can tell you right now, I'm going to retire at 57 with over $1.5 million. And I'm going to need more than that to retire because Mookie bets went up 15% during the game. Great. I'm glad I don't have one because I'd be selling it right now. And I want to keep on the Mookie if I had them. But I know exactly, like, I got a pension coming. I've got four retirement accounts, and none of them are cards. These cards are my hobby. I enjoy opening things. I enjoy looking them up. I enjoy spending time with my wife and kids looking them up. And then we open them up, and if I can sell it for a profit, $200 is $200, you know? Like, I don't know what I got sitting here. Okay, how about this? I sold the five-pack of the Hot Rookies for some money to a guy on Twitter. I bought this for 50 bucks. I got my 50 bucks back right there. And I've got like 65 other cards sitting in there, 695 other cards sitting in there. I bought this for $8 because I like it. 
And if uh, two years from now, this is worth $20, yeah, I'll sell it. But right now, this is worth $8 to me. But just uh, cards are not an investment. If you're buying cards to invest money, just stop doing it. It's not smart. Like no person will tell you to buy cards as an investment. They, they just won't. Uh, especially when like people are buying cards with money they don't have. I mean, if you have a means to get it, you're like, yeah, man, I'll get you on Friday when I get paid. That's fine. Or are you putting on a credit card? I don't care. But if you're literally telling me in my DMs, hey, man, can I get 50 bucks so I can buy this card? Like, no, I, this is crack cocaine. This is gambling. This is, you're a degenerate gambler. Ugh, unbelievable. Garrett's over here trying to use emojis because he knows he's going to get me going on eBay. So we last time we touched on the on the eBay 101, the PSA 10 question mark. Does anybody really think that the little uh, going up line or an arrow pointing upwards is like invest, invest, invest? It's like Jim Cramer, sell, 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 sell. Do you really think that's getting anybody's attention? I mean, it really cheeses me when it says non-auto in a card, and I'm looking for a Drew Lock autograph card, and all these non-autos come up. Like I'm absolutely not buying your non-auto. Fuck off. You're the goddamn used car salesman and you're trying to sell me, you know, a shit sandwich and calling it a turkey burger. It's not going to work. You're a used car salesman and that's what you're doing. And, and you know what? I understand just because I don't like it doesn't mean I don't understand. I understand why you're doing it. It's, it's eye catchy. The PSA 10 is going to bring up more cards. The PSA 10 question mark, putting in other people's names going to bring up more cards. Um, the non-auto is going to bring up more cards, going to get more eyes, going to get more views so you get your stuff sold. Just because I, I don't like it doesn't mean I don't understand. I understand. It's just stupid. So stop. Let's see. What do I think about PSA 9 verse 10? I think about double the money. Like I got this for 8 bucks. PSA 9. You can look on eBay right now. PSA 9 to me. The PSA 8 is about a raw card. It should be about the same price. PSA 9s should be more than a raw card. And PSA 10s obviously are, are the perfect card. But how many of your cards that are sitting around at home are, are PSA 9s or 10s? Like not that many. And the more hands that touch them, the less chance you have of that P you getting a PSA 9 or 10. Like how many cards... Ask all right, JB Old Town Cards today put up a bunch of his stuff. It's like, yep, I ripped every single one of these himself. How many cards do we get from breakers who they touch it, they put it in the sleeve, they put it in the top loader, they send it to us who then opens it. It's like, oh, sweet, I got a mail day. I got to take a picture. I got to say thanks, Chris, for sending me this card. It's so great. I had the best mail day ever, and it's awesome. And I got to let everybody know that you're super great, and they should do all these deals with you because you're the man. And then, like, I just move this card all around in here because it's not tight. And then after that, okay, I got to take the card out. I got to wipe it off a little bit, get all the fingerprints off, check the edges, make sure it's centered. Then I got to re-put it in a sleeve and then a card saver, package it up, and send it off to PSA and hope for a 10. You want as least amount of hands on it as possible. I just imagine everything I buy off Twitter is never going to grade out unless you already buy it graded. Or eBay for that fact too. And you see all these people who, oh, I'm going to send this back. It's not going to PSA 10. It's not going to gem. Well, no shit. Why would I sell you a card if I thought it was going to be a PSA 10? Like, why would I sell you? Um, I got a, a I want I got sitting here. It's Eloy Jimenez. Why would I sell you this card right here if I thought it was going to gem mint instead of sending it myself? It's going to cost me 15 to 20 bucks to make, what, 60 bucks? There's your investment right there. You want to talk about return on investment? Grade your cards because there's where your money comes back. Um, is PSA 10 really worth it? Just saw some PSA 10s that had corner dings. I mean, it's all subjective. Like if I'm having a bad day, do you not look at different things differently when you're having a bad day? If you're having a good day, do you not look at things a little differently when you're having a great day? So say I'm the PSA grader and my wife decided she's going to leave me last night and I'm coming to work and I'm looking at your Zion and I'm all pissed off. So I'm giving you an eight screw you. My wife left me. You're getting an eight. 
you know, next day I came in, I'm like, oh man, the Broncos won on Sunday. My friends came over, had a barbecue of sweets Monday morning. Your same exact card comes in. You're getting a 10 because I'm in a good mood. Like, is it not subjective? I mean, it's literally human interaction, humans grading stuff. So I can, <laughs> oh God, I can't, I'm going to wear gloves on my next rant. Cause that's something too, that breakers, they, none of them wear gloves. And I honestly, I'm the only person in the hobby who thinks they should wear gloves. So, but well, yeah, PSA 10, some of them have dings, some of them have scratches, you know, they're, they're imperfect too, but that is what you're after, right? Right. As a collector, the perfect card, like if I'm collecting X player, I want some PSA 10s, but you know what? I'll settle for PSA nines. Cause I just like, I like the slab. I like how this card looks. I'd rather have this in a nine than a 10. Cause I don't really give a crap about Ozzy Albies. He's not someone I PC. He's not even on my favorite team. This is look like a cool card that I would pay $8 for. So I did. Oh, my tens are in the other room, so I can't. Oh, what? Do I, what's this one? Oh, that's an eight. But yeah, all my graded cards in the other room. But you know, yeah, exactly. Collect nine, sell tens, or buy tens. Hope they go up. What well, you know, whatever. Collect nines. It's your own PC, so you get to say what you want to have it. If I want to see a card that's slabbed, I'm going to buy a nine every single day. If I'm going to keep it. It's like, why would you grade your own PC cards? So I have a bunch of Drew Locks. I'm not going to grade them because if they don't come back to grow, like a 10, I'd rather have a raw Drew Lock sitting here than pay for a 9. But if I'm going to buy it, I would gladly buy a 9 Drew Lock over a 10 because it, who who cares at that point? Like if you maybe you want the exact perfect card or maybe you just want something that looks really nice. So... Uh, you know, if I'm having a PC card that I want to keep for me forever, I'm buying a nine just because it's like half the price. But if you can afford tens, buy tens all day. If you think a certain player is going to go up in, in value and that's what you want to do and spend your money on, you know, like I bought the Belger coat, uh, Acunas and Sotos because I imagine someday they're going to go up in value. And at the time I had the money for, um, a PSA 10. So that's the card I wanted and I bought it. So it's also, you know, there's, a, it, I said it the last time, there's a different collecting scheme for everybody and it's what you want to do. Do you want nines? Do you want tens? Do you want, <laughs> don't even get me started on GMA. I have a GMA trial is given to me and the borders are chipped and white everywhere. Yeah, man. GMA is like me grading in my basement. Um, but that's awesome. You got that. The, uh, hey, you know what? A 10 to 10 to some people and they don't even care. I have uh, like this card right here came to me. It's a GMA 10. It looks pretty solid and clean. I mean, you could always crack the case and send it into PSA. So whatever. Let's see who's, who's been commenting on stuff. How's the lock PSA 10 coming? Well, I got two of them that are actually at PSA and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, why the hell would I send them to PSA? I got a minimum nine grade on them because I want them for myself, but now nah, whatever kind of, you know, it, the hobby changes differently. You learn, you adapt, you evolve, you educate yourself. And that's how, that's how you become a better collector and get things that you like better. Let's try a different color. We got this. Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. We're going to go with this. It's a little brighter. But yeah, man, if um if I'm just collecting a bunch of stuff just to look, I'm going to give uh I'm going to buy a 9. If I'm looking to move something in the future or maybe like a once in a lifetime kind of card, yeah, I'm going to buy I'm going to buy a 10. But I know something um get, I'm going to put gloves on your next rack, put those cards in game sleeves, not penny sleeves. Might put masking tapes all over the top loader. Do not put scotch tape on a top loader. You know why? It ruins the top loader. Like if you send me a card with scotch tape, I've got to now like use a knife to get that card out, which hopefully now I don't ruin my own card. And then I've got to ruin top loader unless you're not going to put anything on it. Scotch tape is better than no tape when you get a bubble mailer with half your damn card hanging out and it's all bent. Like what's going on? Like what's really happening right now? If you get a card, like, okay, you know, I can have this card right here that we'll just go back to Eloy and it's in here 
And it appears that at one point it had scotch tape on it. This is a messed up uh, top loader. So if your card came and it was sitting out like this, all kinds of bent up in your bubble mailer, you could be pretty pissed. Be a lot happier about some scotch tape on there. But scotch tape just ruined your top loader, could ruin the card. Like painter's tape is blue stuff right here. It's not expensive. It's at all the stores. It, it comes off very easily and it doesn't ruin top loaders. And you know what? You can put them in top or inside just like this. Look, oh, there. Oh, look, my card is safe in there and it's not going to ruin. My card is safe in there. It's not going to ruin. My card's safe. My card's safe. Oh, speaking of one other thing, this isn't even on my list, but since it's here, I hate this sticker. Like, I love Blake Jameson, and I love that this sticker is on this card because it's never coming off. But Breakers, when you put a sticker on your one touch right there because you got to show off that you pulled the card, you get all the hot hands, you get all the hot cards, you don't ever show the shitty cards you pull either. You only show the big ones you get on your Twitter streams or on your YouTube, your Instagrams, whatever. You never show the shitty stuff. Now I've got to go get my goo gone out and my X-Acto knife and get that out of there to get your shitty sticker off my, my card. And uh, my buddy Zach had this awesome Deshaun Watson one of one he was buying today. And Mikey B's cards pulled it. Mikey B's awesome. Like him a lot. Great guy. Great for the hobby. Um, he's a breaker. But he uses stickers. And I hate that. But you know what? It's his business. He can do what he wants. And I can not like it. That's my opinion. And I'm allowed to have one because this is America. And this is my show that I ran on stuff on. So now if I get that card or he got that card he's literally selling it on ebay with that sticker on it take the damn sticker off so you know that card was touched probably by mikey put in the one touch given to zach zach never touched it sticker still on it i like the project 2020 cards you know that card's never been out but if you're going to take that card out your one touch is now ruined almost like it's freaking scotch tape. You got to get the goo gone out and start rubbing stuff off of it. It's just, it's crazy to me, but they got to have the clout. They got to have the, you know, showing everybody, Oh, look at this hit. I pulled, look at this Joe Burrow. Cause it's got my sticker on it and I did it. And I'm so great. Like you just got lucky. It has nothing to do with you. You got some boxes that were allocated to you by the companies and the companies may send better boxes to certain people. There's some insider information that says they do, but I have no proof of it that, that, you know, buck city breaks and some of these bigger guys can get better boxes than you or I can get from distributors. Cause they spend more than 20 grand a month with them. So, you know, there's rumors are out there that some of these boxes are loaded. I don't know if I believe it or not, but the rumors are out there, but you know, it could be true. Just like I think regional um, dis distribution is true. I live in Ohio and I get all kinds of former Buckeyes, Bengals and Browns in my cards. And all my dudes who live out in Colorado are like, yeah, man, I got all these Broncos. I don't even know what to do with all these Jerry Judys. All right, dude, I'll trade you like 20 Bakers for 20 Jerry's because you're a Browns fan and I'm a Broncos fan living in Ohio. So what comes out here? I, I don't think I've, I pulled one lock uh, solid card out of a pack once i pulled a gold laser prism other than that awesome burrows awesome aj greens awesome nick chubbs great you know baker mayfield sweet obj's nothing so i'm a firm believer in the regional distribution as far as the like you know padded boxes goes i'm not sure i'm just not a fan of the sticker breakers if you want to put a sticker on it it's your business i don't care what you do but i'm allowed to not like it and he's not the only one. He's just the only one I thought of today because I saw Zach's post and, and he sold his card. That's awesome. And he said, hey, yo, I'm, you know, I'm going through a tough time. I need to sell some cards, make some money. So he did. And he got a good chunk of change for it. And then the dude who bought it from him even tweeted out and said, hey, Mikey, who bought this card? Who, who ripped this card? Because I want to thank him. And then these two people who never met each other before found each other on, on the Twitter. And yeah, I called it the Twitter because I'm really tired. It's 12, 12 in the morning and, and whatever. But I thought it was a really cool story of interaction too. But then we started somehow talking about scotch tape on top loaders and that got into stickers on one touches. <sighs> what are we going to do? So I like to sell stuff on Twitter. I also sell stuff on eBay. 
eBay, you can get low balled on all the time, but you also have an auto decline. How cool would that be on Twitter to have an auto decline button? Like, no, I'm not selling my card for $17 when I have it up for 40. You can give me $40 and I'll give you my card. It's capitalism. That, that's how this works. You're also allowed to give me set to offer $17 because it's capitalism. It's that's how it works. It's supply and demand. It's not difficult to understand. You're willing to pay $17. I'm not willing to accept that. So I'm going to keep my card. It's like you go into a car dealership. This car MSRP $35,000. Mm, you know what? I'll give you 28 for it. No, I want $35,000. Mm, I'll give you 32 for it. Okay, deal. Yeah, sure. So I'll throw in some rims and, and a roof rack because you like to go hiking and search for Bigfoot and shit. So, you know, it is what it is. And I hate that saying too. It is what it is. Like, no shit. It is what it is, but you also have the opportunity to change what it is. So it isn't always what it is because literally it's the butterfly effect. You can literally change anything you want to at any time. Ah, it, it gets on my nerves, but buy, you know, buyers, I did a stack sales last week and people who just string you along and yeah, man, I, I'm thinking about this. Uh, I really want this, but you know, I, I really collect, uh, I really collect, um, you know, uh, uh, and then like once a day, they're in their DMs. Hey, man, you still got that card? Yeah, all right, dude, bro. I'm getting paid on Friday. Friday comes along. Hey, man, well, something came up, bro, but I still want that card. Could you hold it for me? Like, how long do you expect me to hold a card for you? Like, I don't really care. As long as we remain in constant, con you know, communication and you're a nice human being that I talk to all the time. Oh, Garrett. Oh, Garrett. Spamming your DMs and subtweeting those who ghost your DMs. Oh, Garrett, I just had to stop talking what I was talking about because why would you subtweet anybody? If you're going to make a comment, comment to that person. There's been a couple times where I've said on this show, well, such and such, you know, this isn't about you. This isn't about you. I've blocked this person, but I'm talking about this specific situation. That person is blocked. And that's why I'm not. I'm not talking about them. But if I have a problem with you, I'm coming and telling you. Garrett, you're a dickhead because you sent me a picture of you flicking off a Bronco shirt. Screw you. You know what, Dave? I don't know you that well, but you had a really nice things to say to me on Twitter today and the other day. So I like you. You're on my good side today. And plus, you bought us a bottle of wine on our anniversary. That was awesome. But, you know, just spamming your DMs. Okay, you know what? Some stuff's really cool. Like today, someone DM me, hey, man, I saw you got um, uh, you, you and your daughter collecting Jesse Winkers. And I got I, I was going through a box, found the sepia, and I want to send it to you guys. Do you have one yet? I'm like, hey, that's really cool, but we've got one. Like these are the five we need left. I really appreciate that. <laughs> then someone else jumps in your DMs. Hey, I see you like Nick Senzel. I got this card for $25. Um, that's cool. The last like five sold on eBay were eight. So – no. And then, and like, I've never talked to you before. And the first thing you're going to say is, hey, buddy, I see you you'd collect Nick Senzel. You want to buy this shitty card? No, I don't want your shitty card. I've never even talked to you before. You know, Dave, maybe you, if you came to me and with like a $20 card and it was like, you wanted 20 bucks for it. And it was like, I'm, I'm, I'm at 15 because I like you. We chat often and you're a good human being. You do great things for the hobby. Yeah, I'm probably going to give you that 20 bucks. Okay, a perfect example. Um, Phil, I can't remember his name, last name right now, or his hiddle, Twitter handle, PG Phil 13, something like that. I had a Bryce Harper uh, for sale. I had no idea what the price of that. I couldn't find it on eBay, so I said 15 bucks. He said, Yeah, sure, I'll take it for 15 bucks. And we found some comps for it, and it was like, a $5 card. So we're like, Oh, you know what, dude, I'm not going to, you know, charge you $15 for this, even though you said so. So we agreed on like $8 or something like that. But you have conversations with people you like. If that was a dude I never talked to before. He's absolutely giving me my $15. But since Phil's a guy I talk to and I chat with sometimes on Twitter, you know what, dude, I don't, I don't feel right taking your 15 bucks. Let's, you know, well, what about like eight? You cool with that? Absolutely. Let's do it. So it's all about communication um, engagement with other people and just, just being a good human being and not stringing people along, like ghost your DMS. What are you, are you an adult? Are you five? You know, if someone DMS you like, yeah, I might forget sometimes cause I'm forgetful. I got two young kids and I work a really stressful job, 
So sometimes I, I look at your message and I don't get back to you for a day, but I'm going to get back to you. Or if it's been like two hours and, and somebody's like, oh, you know, you saw my message. I've literally had this twice before. You get that little blue check mark in your DMs. I know you saw my message, so obviously you're thinking it over. You know what, dude? I saw your message at 3.30 in the morning when I got up to take a piss. I looked at my phone to see what time it was. I got Fuck, it's 3.30 in the morning. Oh, I got a message. Wonder who it is. Oh, this dude wants to do something. I'll check it in the morning. Wake up in the morning. Hey, I saw you saw my message, so you must be thinking over this offer. Like, what? I, what? Who? The audacity of you. What is going on right now? Like, come on. Get it together, people. I can't wait to spam every single one of you with shitty car deals tomorrow. I'm going to sell you this Rod Smith for $35. Like, it's going to happen. I'm going to turn into a used car salesman. I'm going to sell one of you guys this card for $35. It's a freebie. But it's Rod Smith, and I like him. But it's just it's ridiculous. Buyers and, and, and sellers, like nobody has any shame anymore. They will just hit you up for whatever they want. And when you don't like it, then I'm blocking you. You don't want to give me $30 for my crappy card? Block. Like I don't care if you block me. You know, A couple of my buddies even told me they mute me on Mondays because I run a stream. Of, uh, of uh, like a sales thread with a chat group I'm in. And I just retweet all day long. I retweet other people's stuff. I sell other people's stuff more than I sell my own stuff. And they're like, bro, your Mondays are out of control. I had to mute you. Like, cool. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm a girl. I'm 38 years old. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I don't know any of you. I've never met any of you. I hope to meet you. And I consider some of you my friends. But it's not going to hurt my feelings. Like, if you mute me. Or if you, you know, say, hey, I don't want your card or like, I, I just don't understand. If you get, it's, it's, it's a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. You don't get caught up in your feelings in a hobby or people who call it a business. You know what? Goldline Cards is now an LLC. So it technically is a business for me. And so, yeah, it's a hobby and I'm not calling it an investment because what I do is I make money off doing things and it is not an investment. Oh, jeez. But yeah, don't lead people on. Don't jump in their DMs and be a dick. Don't, you know, ghost people because you're five years old. If you forget to look at something, you forgot to look at it. I'm sure I've got messages from a couple months ago that I've never looked at it. You know what? Here, here's a perfect example. Um, this guy, Ben, Ben Angler, him and I had, uh, or he and I had a Beau Bichette trade for some Cincinnati Reds Bowman's trade like two weeks ago and I completely forgot about it and I assume he did too because he hit me up like yesterday like hey man were we out on that bow trade I'm like honestly dude I just forgot um where are we at and he's like well you were giving me these and I was giving you these I'm like absolutely let me get home I got it together I shipped it out last night because I forgot and you know what that's what human beings and, and adults that's what they do I forgot my bad I apologize let's make this right or you make a, a mistake with your shipment or a card or something. You apologize. You make it right. You don't just avoid your problems. It's stupid. Let's see the comments. Had a breaker. Found out Parker was the Mahomes kid. Got one of his five Mahomes Crusade cards. I for Parker another card because Mahomes a one of one price. Are you asking me a question? Oh, and then the card posted eBay thirty thousand for Mahomes one on one montage. Yeah, you want to put a down payment on a house or have a Mahomes? I mean, you want a Toyota Corolla or do you want a Patrick Mahomes card? I mean, Honda Civics are pretty nice now. I hear they go like two hundred fifty thousand miles. Parker can get that and he can drive it till he's like forty. I mean, you won't even have to have a car payment, Garrett. You want to have a car with no car payment or you want to have a one of one uh, mosaic montage? That's a dick move. I kind of hope you tell me who that is so I don't do, you know, buy from them. And then breakers. Okay, okay. So uh, let's let's get this, let's get this down. Some, not all. Yeah, your 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 son is interested in a thirty thousand dollar card. He must have saw your um your pristine front lawn that looks like a uh a uh, putting green and your Hellcat that you drive and thought you could afford to, to buy your kid a $30,000 card. That's what it was, Garrett. Those 55 cameras you have outside your house to protect your house, you know, that, that's, uh, that's where the, the 30 grand comes from. But breakers, some of them can get boxes for extremely cheap on, uh, you know, from their oh, charger, no Hellcat, my apologies, from their distributor. And some of them can't. So 
Um, just I, I'm not gonna say any names because I like everybody. That's a lie. I don't like everybody. Actually, I like very few people, but it's not cool to call people out, even though I just said do it. But I'm not specifically talking about anyone. I don't want to hurt anybody's business because nobody should say words that are directly going to affect another human being's business and income and, and how they run you know, their livelihoods. But if you're a breaker who's getting boxes for $200 a box and then going in turn selling them for like $200 a division, all right, let's just do the math here. So football, there's eight divisions. That would make $1,600. And you're paying $200 for that box. You are now making $1,400 on that box. I mean, it's a little extreme example, but $1,400 a box. Now let's say it's a case. <laughs> we'll just say a case of 10, just to be easy. Now you're making $14,000 on a case break. I mean, minus shipping supplies, Minus opportunity cost because of the time you're putting in or, you know, if you're working out of your basement, if you rent a space, which currently that's big news. I'm starting to rent a space at my dude's uh, establishment. So technically gold line will be brick and mortar because I will be uh, leasing space from them. So we're trying to get that um, going. But to be a brick and mortar to get a, to get a distri uh, distributor license. That way, that's how you get the boxes so damn cheap. But not everybody does. So there are there are breakers who literally make like five dollars a box, and they do it just for the fun of it, and you know to create a community, maybe to get a little clout, so that eventually they can become those breakers who get you know boxes. But then you got um, you know people spending fifty grand a month at these distributors, and they're getting you know the best cases, the best deals on a case. It's just, it's just like any other thing. If I'm going to spend 50 grand a month at your business, are you going to give me a bigger discount than if I spend like five grand a month at your business? Cause I can guarantee, I can, I can guarantee you my business for three years at 50 grand a month, or I may or may not be able to get five grand a month to you. Are you going to give me a little discount? Cause I'm giving you 50 grand a month for five years. Like I can guarantee that money. To the company, like yeah, that company is going to give you a discount. That's that's how this works. That's, that's life. That's how generally life works. Some of these breakers are making money hand over fist, and it's outrageous. It's ridiculous. And you got some who are probably even losing money just on you know supplies. I mean, good luck finding top loaders and penny sleeves right now. Unless you're going to pay a whole bunch of money for them, and you're wondering why, a, you know, a team like like last year, the Broncos were like four hundred dollars, like for a case break because of Drew Locke. Okay, who do we got now? Jerry Judy. Okay, which which guys do you want? You want Tua? You want Burrow? But this year you've got all kinds of guys. You got T. Higgins. You got Rugs. You got C. D. Lamb. You got Edwards Hilaire, um, Judy, Herbert, Jordan Love. There's like fifteen guys that are going to be, you know possible big huge money guys and so prices are ridiculous they're higher than they've ever been i mean look at the mosaic box that just dropped on panini tonight it was like five or six hundred dollars i believe it was 24 cards and one autograph so pretty much if you don't get a tua or a Bur burrow autograph you're not getting your money worth like five hundred dollars for 24 cards that's like $40 a card. I don't know. I'm not doing the math in my head right now. I can't be right either, but that's just, that's ridiculous, right? Like who's, who's paying this? Unless your name is Phil Hughes or Gary V, which you know what? Great for those guys. Cause they got the money. If I had the money, I'd go piss it away on them too. And, and I'd let YouTube live every single box that I had. And it would be awesome. I'd sit out there in my pool and just give them, you know, give them away to people just driving down the street. Like, hey, you want this box? Here you go. Hey, you want this box? Here you go. Hey, you want this box? Here you go. Hey, here's a college scholarship because I can afford that too. I'd be generous if I was rich, but, you know, whatever. Uh, supply and demand. That's just, that's how it is. We talked about that earlier too. And, and if you really want a product, there are products still on the Tops website, Panini website. I have my uh, Walmart notifications on. And while I'm asleep the other night, they came back on that um, the Baseball Chronicles were back in stock. And that's actually how I figured out in the first place. My buddy Nick, I was chatting with him. 
And he said, hey, man, uh, Walmart's got Baseball Chronicles in stock. I just got the notification, sent me the link, like, here. And I bought three blasters because I really like that product. So I turned the notifications on. I woke up one day a couple of days ago, notification had gone off in the middle of the night that they were back in stock. And now they're sold out again. Like, go to, go to the websites and turn your notifications on for those products and just hope you get lucky. Or, you know, on a Saturday, you got nothing to do. It's raining outside. Shitty weather's coming up pretty soon. People aren't going to be out playing soccer or whatever you guys do with your free time. I don't know. I don't have any free time. But, you know, more people are going to be driving around trying to find stuff. And you see pictures all the time of guys just standing in line at stores. Like, who cares, man? I don't care if you spend six hours in line at a store. I really don't. I don't care that you, you know, this is just me. It's my show. I can say what I want. You might care. Yeah, I don't care that you clean out the shelves. I don't care that Target has a two-person limit. Like, I don't care. How does it affect me? Like, it doesn't. I can't find stuff in the store. Good. I probably shouldn't be buying it right now anyways. But whatever. I mean, look at this table. This is ridiculous. Look at all these cards I have. Look. Look at all this shit. Look at all this shit. I got way too much stuff. I talked to DMN Takeover. I'm like, bro, help me out. I sent him pictures. He's like, send it to me. I'll take care of it. I mean, last time it was like $400 of stuff he sold for me and he takes half of it. That's like 800 bucks and he does all the work. Uh, yeah, sign me up, get rid of the stuff I don't want and help me because my wife's getting kind of mad that all my stuff's here. So I was telling Garrett before I signed on, she was in here looking for a card and organizing my stuff. I'm the most unorganized person in the face of the earth. <laughs> and, you know, as we're getting on the topic of should I buy these, how about the tweet, did I do good? <laughs> Moves down a little bit because I'm going to make this move here. Did I do good? I'm going to post 15 mosaic boxes and ask, did I do good? You know what you're asking yourself right there? You're asking for a popularity contest. You're asking for a senior superlative in the yearbook from your high school. You're asking for a date with the prom queen. That's what you're asking for. Because you're going to get the one side of people like you, a-hole. You just bought 15 of this just for the profit. You didn't leave any for the kids. You won't do this. You won't do that. And you got all the other people. Oh, man, flip life rules. Take all the money. Everybody sucks. Make that money, bro. Flip life for life, bro. Get yourself some health insurance, flip life. Like I guarantee half these flippers don't have health insurance. You know what's awesome about working for the government? My son has, a, has a, um, a peanut allergy and we have awesome health insurance. I bet if I was a flipper, I'd be spending um, like 50 grand on his, his uh, immunotherapy right now. But instead, I have a job and it's awesome and it gives me health insurance. But the flip life, if that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. I would do it too if I had to put food on my table, but just to do it as my job, like, no, I mean, that's not for me. That can be for you. But like the did I do good? You could fuck right off with that. And I'm sorry, I you don't use bad words, but it makes me so mad because literally, you know you did. Okay, um, I opened up a box and mm, let's see if I got a card sitting around here that I like. Okay, I'd be like me opening my, uh, my, my, um, my complete set, showing a picture. Did I do good? Yeah, I did good. Like, no shit. I got the, the stars parallel. I, I posted a picture like, oh, super excited. Let me show you my hits. It's like people just, po you know, showing their hits. Then asking, did I do good? Hey, do you guys like my cards? Hey, man, I got I got this, uh, this, this Mike Trout PSA 10. Is this a good card? I'm not really sure who Mike Trout is. Um, hi, he's the best baseball player to ever live. Um, you know, I sent the Zion away. It came back PSA 10. Is PSA good? Because I heard GMA is the best, you know. On a scale from 1 to 10, is 1 the best or 10? I don't know, man. Like, get it together over there. Just be like, you know, flex on it. Like, yo, bro, I just sent all this away, and I got 15 PSA 10s back. Look at all my jaw and Zions. And it's like, bring your balls out and just put them there. Like, yeah, look at this shit. God, why do you be like, do I do good? Yes, you did good. We all know you did good. If you want to flex, be like, just, just post a picture, no comment. If I see a picture of like 10 Mike Trouts, or let's say, just because like right now, Zion and Jaws are coming back. If I saw a picture of like 10 Zion and Jaw PSA 10s, I'd be like, whoa, dude, that is sweet. And I would immediately comment on the, on the thing, dude, that is awesome. Or 
girl. I say dude, and that's terrible. I shouldn't because there's a lot of wonderful female collectors in this hobby, and my wife and daughter are two of them. But, um, but like, yeah, for real. Like, if you just posted a picture flexing with your cards, like, dude, that is so cool. But then to like ask for attention, like, hi, come see me, come look what I did. Oh, okay, great. Look, ah ha ha, I bought an Ozzy Albies PSA 9. I'm so cool. Ozzy Albies almost went to the World Series, but he didn't quite make it. But I got these two cards. Come look at me and tell me I'm great. No, you suck. I'm not telling you you're great. If you just posted your shit and it was a 10, yeah, you're awesome. Jesus. God, I got a little riled up there. All right, let's read some comments. You'll come to Ohio and get that shit cleaned up. Tacos and a bottle of Crown Dew. We got the best taco place down the road. It's called Tostada Delicious. This guy used to work for Google and um, had some family issues. Ended up over here working at Ohio State and opened up his own restaurant. It is like the most delicious food in the world. All locally sourced stuff. Amazing. Six cards last weekend, 8,000 left to go. Bro, I got like, I don't even know. Uh, too, too many to count right here. All uh, right, so you're not going to lie, it's my favorite channel. I'm funny and I'm real. I, I, I am real. I'm a human being. I'm not Pinocchio. I mean, sometimes I lie. Now nah, I'm just screwing around. But, um, all right, I'm going to flex your Tiger Rookie and Tiger Auto and complete sets. Dude, Garrett, I would love if you flexed it. Garrett, please, 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 please just post your pictures. And I would just be like, boom, goes the dynamite. But if you're like, oh, everybody, look at my Tiger pictures. Oh, man. All right, Dave, see you, Matty. Uh, appreciate you stopping by, as always. Um, I'm 51 minutes in, and it's 1234, and I was like a half hour late. I can't believe there's even people watching me jibber-jabber about nothing. But, man, it, you know what? I'm going to one-up you, Garrett. I'm going to go find some fills and be like, you know what? Actually, with Steph Curry coming up, I'm going to go find a Steph Curry, and, and maybe I'll bet you my Steph Curry versus your Tiger. No, because my, my that Steph Curry is going to be worth a lot more than that Tiger. But yeah, dude, if you got some Tigers, just post them. You'll be like, did I do good? Like, no, I'm going to post a picture of an Allen and Ginter lion and be like, oh, your Tiger sucks. My lion will beat you in a fight. And it'll be like literally an actual picture of a lion. Like, those, those are cool. I, my, my kids love those. Like, oh, you know what? You got a Sears Tower. You know what I got? I got Park Avenue, so screw your Sears Tower. I up with you. I want up to you to a seat to a Park Avenue. So there, take the. Should I? I'm gonna post this tomorrow and ask people if I did good. And I'm really interested to see those comments. Did I do good? I'll post two of them. I'll post my Juan Soto PSA 10 and be like, oh, I sent this away and got it back. Did I do good? And I'll send this one just just for shits and giggles. See what happens. You got the Bo Jackson golf cart coming soon, dude. That is sweet. I had a couple of bows sitting around here for you. Oh, wait, they're in the other room in your stack. Because once you said I started a stack for you, I started a, a stack for you. I got one for you too, Chris, if you're still watching. Sitting on the porch, drinking and waiting. Uh, what you waiting for, Chris? What you waiting for? But I, got, I do have a sweet uh, pirate stack for you here. Um, it may include somebody named Bob Clemente. Not a Roberts, but a Bob. It's pretty damn cool. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. I'm really sorry if you're late. I, I it's like I said before, um, my wife was cleaning up my table. I signed into the wrong YouTube. I signed in my, I was in my personal email um, for my spreadsheet. I did with my sale. And then I had to log out and log in. It, it was crazy. Two more things I want to talk about before I get off here. We are upgrading. I mean, if you're gold line, you got to have gold bubble mailers, right? I'm just going to post pictures of this and just flex. Just flex. This is going to be my flex. Did I do good? I got a gold bubble mailer. Did I, did I do good? Should I put a black line down it because I'm gold line? Maybe we should have got all black and put a gold line down it. No, but that's straight. I like that. Uh, one more thing before I get going. I, I appreciate you guys, you guys watching. Ah, Gabe, just getting on. Hey, what's up, buddy? Better start numbering them. Oh, I'm going to start numbering my bubble mailers. Gabe, I'm about 54 minutes in, so you might have to go watch. I'm at the end here. I'm about to start talking about some socks with sandals. Don't do it. Just don't. Wear shoes. If it's the summertime, 
you can wear slides. Uh, apparently, apparently, what the popular youth calls it now are slides. I remember when they were called sandals, and like they called like thong sandals now or something. Where it's called flip flops. Like that, you had two. That you had the Jesus sandals. You had sandals, and then you, <laughs> you said the fuck is a slide exactly. And then you had flip flops, dude. And that was it. And then you had those Adidas ones with the little pokey things on the bottom that hurt the hell out of your feet unless you wore them with socks. Those are the only sock sandals uh, allowed with socks. And it's like after a sporting event. So I played baseball for, you know, a doubleheader on a Saturday in high school. My feet hurt. Yeah, I'm going to rock some of these Adidas sandals with the little cushy things on them with my baseball socks on. Because I got those baseball socks jacked up to my knee because I'm a pimp like that. And my uniform on still. And that's what, that you know what, that's when it's acceptable for socks and sandals. If you're on the bus on the way to or from a sport sports game that you're going to participate in otherwise it's it's your slides because i got i got to be hip with the popular youth now and call them slides they call slides because it's a sandal that's got like the thing on top and your foot just slides in oh yeah i am old i'm, I'm older than you chris oh geez i'm the oldest one here i'm 38 bro don't say gabe's 26 Garrett's in his mid thirties. Chris is 37. And apparently I got wrinkly balls. So, uh, but Gabe, we talked about, I found my first pack searcher. Um, people who post th those pictures of, should I buy these? Like, no, absolutely. Do not buy these. If you don't know what it is, don't buy it. Leave it on the shelf for somebody else. Like I leave soccer on the shelf because I don't want soccer. I don't know anything about soccer. Uh, if you don't know what it is, why are you posting a picture on Twitter? Like everybody's got their phone on the, and just go look on eBay. So should I buy these means, can I flip this? Or you know what they do? They say, can I buy these? And then they tweet it to a person with like 15,000 followers who then retweets it, who then retweets it, who then retweets it. And all of a sudden like 45,000 people just saw your shitty picture of like six prestige blasters sitting out at target. And then all of a sudden you got them in your cart and your phone's just blowing up while you're in the baby section, looking for some diapers. And you're like, yo, babe, and you're talking to your wife. You look at your phone. She's like, put that shit down get those number five huggies. You're like, dude, we are a Pampers family. I'm not buying any huggies and your phone's just blowing up. And like all these people are like, yeah, buy them. Don't buy them. Then people are arguing on your timeline and you don't even know what's going on because you said, should I buy this instead of, looking it up yourself like a grown man or a grown woman and say, Hey, you know what? I can flip this and make 20 bucks. I'm going to buy this and I'm going to flip it. I'm going to make $20 because I'm kind of broke and I need 20 bucks. So, and, and Gabe, I, I know you're new to shipping. We've talked about it, dude. Don't ever put tape on a top loader. Never put scotch tape on a top loader, please. The painter's tape, Gabe, the painter's tape. Go buy some blue painter's tape. It's like $3. Do not ruin people's top loaders. Painter's tape. Never use scotch. Good man, Gabe. Good man. Let's see what Garrett said. Going to put this out there. We see Upper Deck 2021 Golf next year. Oh, okay. I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it on the on the, the list. Because you know what's awesome? My wife texts me from Myers. She's like, they got this, 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 and this. Do you want anything? Should I buy these? No, I'm just kidding because it kind of was a joke because I just said you shouldn't say should I buy these. And then I said my wife says should I buy these. My wife knows what to buy. We'll add that to our list there, uh, Garrett. Yeah, Gabe, you know what? If you ever need help with shipping, Garrett ships. He can tell he's got a, a program on pirate ship that will tell you that he shipped like 80,000 uh packages where they go to what time they arrived he'll text message me and be like bro my package is in your in your uh in your mailbox like he knows my package arrived before i know my package arrived it's it's incredible so he's him and his son parker sent out so many racks and so many packages like garrett and um nick uh i think it's zach finn um i ah, fuck I buy from him on eBay all the time, but he's a BCB guy. He's in that discord. He's on Twitter. I believe it's Zachary Finn dudes with bears fan. That guy is like the best shipper in history. That guy is amazing with his shipping. Eloy does a great job of shipping. 
I try my best because I put them in a koozie for optimal beverage coolage, but also it gives a little extra protection. But um, yeah, shipping, ask Garrett. Garrett's your guy. There you go. How are you shipping three cards PWE, Garrett? You're not. You're getting a bubble mailer. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Yeah, that's about all I got today. This, um, the collect and invest thing was the last thing. We kind of already hit it. Like, I am a collector. I'm not an investor. I know. Well, I invest, but not in cards. But I know some people think that this is a giant investment and that bubble's just, it's going to burst. And you know what? So is the stock market. It's going to go down. I've got 20 years till I retire. I'm, I'm going to be good. Like, but my investments are, are in the stock market. They're in index funds. They're in my pension. They are not in cards. You could call it a business move because I buy and sell cards to make money, but it's definitely not an investment for me. And it's, it's just not. So let's see what you guys are talking about here. USPS rates went up Sunday night. Pirate ship. Pirate ship is awesome, Gabe. That's what I use too. Three cards, PWE. Thank you, card. Garrett, you are just the master of disguise. A thick thank you card. Put them next to each other and tape it shut. Because you can't put them on top of each other. It'll be too thick. You got to put them next to each other. That's that's a great point. Um, yeah, Bubble Mailer, we're tracking. I had a dude today I, I, we did a trade with. I sent him his tracking. He's like, how'd you get tracking? PayPal ship, pirate ship, the post office does it? Like, what? what is going on here? So he sent me a bubble mailer with no tracking. Like, did you just like stick five stamps on it? Like what is, what is happening? I, I better get my stuff. Cause you got some good stuff in return too. I kind of wish I knew what I even traded with him. I got to go check out my spreadsheet, but uh, yeah, hit up um, Garrett about pirate ship, Chris, definitely for show. I am all out of topics. looks like you guys are having fun in the comments chatting to each other, but if you have nothing else to uh, to rant on about, you can chat with each other on Twitter, and I'll jump off here. Garrett, uh, Chris is my dude from the Pittsburgh area who – I don't know how much he wants to tell me about himself. Oh, yes. Two more things we need to talk about. Shaving the beard. So the beard's got to go. It's coming back because I haven't been beardless and I, I literally can't tell you the last time I shaved my face. But for for November, we got to raise some money um, for for men's health. So I'll, I'll be shaving the beard and growing just the stash. And after that, I'll get the beard back. But if anybody wants to join, uh, I believe K-Dubs was heading it up. Um, I don't know if he's like heading it up or just tweeted it out or whatever, but a bunch of the hobby people are – doing Movember and just uh, just growing the stash. So I'll be participating in that. Chiefs Broncos on Sunday. We will bet a card of some sort on it, I'm sure. But, you know, today's Tuesday, so we have plenty of time. Well, Wednesday now where I'm at. Plenty of time to discuss, but I'm definitely getting the spread on that and not the money line because you're going to um, – you're going to dominate, even though we got locked back, but it's still ugly out there. But you guys, I'm going to jump off here because it's 1246 in the morning. I got to remember, I got a babysitter tomorrow because last week I was up super late and woke up at like 10 in the morning, was freaking out because every morning my wife wakes me up at 730. It's like, all right, you got to get up. And then I take like 10 minutes, get up, go to the bathroom, whatever, come downstairs, watch the kids while she goes to work. Woke up at like 10, like, what's going on? Becky didn't wake me up. Where are the kids at? And I was completely freaking out. Then I hear the babysitter's voice downstairs. Like, oh my God, that was awesome. Like, it was just, it was just, it was insane. Like, I thought my kids and it was like a nightmare. Oh, Jay's got surgery 6.30 in the morning. Good luck, Garrett. You'll be in my prayers tonight and thinking about you all day tomorrow. Keep me updated when you can. Um, and I not going to share any more information though it's very private but i know what it is and it's not very serious or invasive so hopefully everything should go great um like i said we'll all be praying for you you know you're our guy um but i'm gonna i'm gonna jump off here uh we'll get together on something to to put on the line for the chiefs broncos game 
And uh, you guys, thanks for watching. I know there's four of us hanging out and we've been hanging out for an hour and four minutes. So that's super cool to me. Um, I, I appreciate the grinds, my gears. Maybe next time I won't be on so late and I'll have, uh, have <laughs> just keep the live going and we'll just chat. What are you going to watch my cat? My cat's over there. Get it, get a chat group going on Twitter or something. Garrett, uh, Gabe is cactus cards on Twitter. Uh, that's his cards account. And it's also his name on there too, for his personal account. So if you guys want to, um, chat, and uh, Garrett is IT guy, and Chris is is wood pig. So check check each other out, hang out, become friends. Like I said, I'm all about engagement. So gotta get packed for surgery. I'm still, I'm rambling on, dude. I was supposed to jump off like ten minutes ago. I am jumping off. You guys have a great night. We'll talk to you later. Good luck tomorrow, Garrett. Everybody else, thanks for watching. Chris, enjoy that whiskey and cigar. Gabe, thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, Goldline, we out.